Good morning students. Today I am going to explain you the third chapter of geography of class 6th and the name of the chapter is motions of the earth. Before starting the chapter let's discuss a few natural things that happen daily in our life. Students Every day we notice that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. We are always conscious of the apparent movement of the sun. But we don't realize that the earth on which we live is constantly in motion. Motion means moving. It is moving. When the sun disappears we say that the sun sets and when the sun emerges we say that the sun rises students we are least aware that the sun in fact neither rises nor sets the sun is stationary meaning of the word stationary is it is not moving so sun is a fixed heavenly body and earth is moving constantly around the sun dear students in the previous chapters also you have studied that earth is a planet which moves around the sun students in order to understand this concept we can take an example students all of you must have traveled by a train to visit different places while looking outside from a moving train you will observe that the things and features outside the trains seems to be moving in the opposite direction but in reality the things and the features outside the train are static it means they are stable or you can say they are fixed while the train is moving Similarly we are also moving with our earth but the sun and other stars are fixed so dear students in this chapter we will study about the two types of simultaneous movements of the earth these two movements are rotation and revolution students do you know what is rotation Rotation is the movement of the earth on its axis. And what is revolution? Movement of the earth around the sun is known as revolution. Students, firstly we will learn about rotation. Rotation is the movement of the earth on its axis. Do you know what is an axis? i am going to tell you students an axis of the earth on which the earth spins is an imaginary line that joins the north pole and the south pole the axis of the earth is tilted from the vertical line which passes through the center of the earth at an angle of 23 and a half degree right or 66 and a half degree left from the plane of its orbit and this tilt of the axis is known as the inclination of the earth's axis the plane formed by the orbit is termed as earth orbital plane students all of you know that the earth is spherical in shape that allows only half of the sunlight to come at a time the portion facing the sun experiences day and parts that do not face the sun have night the circle that divided the day from night on globe is called the circle of illumination except for the places at the equator days and night are not equal in all the parts of the world children movement of the earth on its axis is called rotation and it takes about 
24 hours for earth to complete one rotation. The direction of rotation is west to east. Rotation of the earth causes day and night. Rotation also causes tides in the oceans. Wind and ocean current also change direction because of rotation of the earth. Students, have you ever imagined that what will happen if earth did not rotate? Students, if the earth will not rotate, the portion of the earth facing the sun would always experience day, thus bringing continuous warmth to the region. The other half would remain in darkness and be freezing cold all the time. Life would have been impossible on the earth in such extreme conditions. Children, now we are going to learn about the second movement of the earth, that is revolution. The earth moves around the sun on its own path called orbit. This motion of earth is called revolution. In next slide, I will tell you that revolution of the earth causes change in seasons. Students, the path followed by earth to make one revolution around the sun is called orbit. The earth revolves around the sun in an elliptical orbit and takes about 365 days and 6 hours for completing one revolution. It is because of revolution that we experience different seasons in our life. Children, do you know what is leap year? A year occurring once every four years which has 366 days. Students, it takes 365 days and 6 hours to revolve around the sun. What we can do is we can take 365 days in a year and ignore 6 hours. Now we will keep on adding these 6 hours for 4 years. Now when we are adding 6 hours for 4 years, it means 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6 is equal to 24. And 24 hours is equal to 1 day. The fourth year now will be of 366 days which is leap year. Therefore, every fourth year, February is of 29 days instead of 28 days. Children, Seasons play a very significant role in our life. They affect our life. But have you ever thought how these seasons occur? Why do we have many seasons? Students, there are basically four seasons. Summer, winter, spring and autumn. In fact, they occur due to effect of revolution of the earth. The revolution of the earth together with the inclined axis are responsible for changes in the seasons. Students, do you know changes in seasons are associated with Situations called solstice and equinox. Students, in this slide, I will tell you about solstice. It is an astronomical event that happens twice, once in summer and once in winter. It is the time when the midday sun is directly overhead at 
one of the tropics on 21st june the sun is directly overhead the tropic of cancer and this time is considered as the summer solstice while on december 22 the sun shines directly on the tropic of capricorn and is known as winter solstice both these solstices occur once in a year students we will learn about summer solstices in points first point during the summer solstice the northern hemisphere is inclined towards the sun and the southern hemisphere stays away from the sun second point sun rays fall vertically on the tropic of cancer while they fall slanting on the tropic of capricorn third point the northern hemisphere receives more light and heat from the sun as compared to the southern hemisphere so it is summer in northern hemisphere and winter in southern hemisphere fourth point the areas near the poles receive less heat as the rays of the sun are slanting fifth point in the northern hemisphere days are longer than nights while it is opposite in the southern hemispheres sixth point 21st june is the longest day and the shortest night in the northern hemisphere while it is the shortest day and longest night in the southern hemisphere seventh point in the summer solstice the north pole is inclined towards the sun and the places beyond the arctic circle receives continuous sunlight for about 6 months while south pole remains in darkness for about 6 month this was all about the summer solstice students now we are going to learn about the winter solstice first point at this time the southern hemisphere is inclined towards the sun while the northern hemisphere stays away from the sun second point sun rays fall vertically on the tropic of capricorn and slanting on the tropic of cancer third point since the sun rays fall vertically at the tropic of capricorn a larger portion of the southern hemisphere gets light so it is summer in the southern hemisphere with longer days and shorter nights while this time winter is experienced in northern hemisphere fourth point 22nd december is the longest day in the southern hemisphere while it is the shortest day in the northern hemisphere fifth point during winter solstice north pole remains in the darkness for about 6 months while the south pole receives sunlight for about Six months, because during this time the southern hemisphere is inclined towards the sun, 
and hence receives sunlight throughout this period sixth point the southern hemisphere receives more heat and light from the sun as compared to the northern hemisphere seventh point students do you know australia argentina are the countries that celebrate christmas in the summer season this was all about winter solstice students in this slide we will learn about equinox equinox is a latin word which means equal night thus equinox can be termed as the times when days and nights are equal it occur twice in a year on march 21st and september 23rd direct rays of the sun fall on the equator the whole earth experiences equal day and equal night on 23rd september it is autumn season in the northern hemisphere and spring season in the southern hemisphere the opposite is in the case on 21st march when it is spring in the northern hemisphere and autumn in the southern hemisphere both these equinox are considered as spring equinox and autumn equinox students now it must be clear to you that rotation and revolution are two movements of the earth rotation causes day and night and revolution results in changes of the seasons thank you